Hello, everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. So, it's been a while. What was my last failure? Got it, that's right. So, we just got back from Vicky, uh, nay, Victorian Principles, and we got that neat little book, and I think there's some more we can do with her in order to win, uh, I think it was the, the, uh, the Sexual Prowess Competition. Uh, and there's a couple other things we can do, judging by my inventory, but let's start with that, because that's entertaining. I guess. All right, Vicky, can you help me out here? I'm back. So you are. You know, you are the greatest, baby. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Yeah, right. Nice line. Uh, no, really, since you left, I've done nothing but read about sex. And now I'm the most sexually knowledgeable person on this ship. Oh, really? I'd, uh, like to see you prove that. I bet you yeah, would. Yeah, I bet you would. Zing. No, I don't think I'll prove it with you. I know now. You just weren't that good. Oh, zing. Okay, well, I believe if I ask her to prove it, that will move the story along, but I wonder if anything else changes now that, uh, we've gone through what we've gone through. How about me whispering a few Dewey Decimal numbers in your ear, Vicky? As if I haven't heard that line before. <laughs> Men, you're all alike. You don't need a pickup line. Just ask me. Um, I did, but you turned me down because you know how awful I am. Uh, but I do appreciate your straightforward nature. There must be some way to test your theory that you're the most sexually competent person aboard ship. Oh, really? How? Well, seeing as you've been working on this ship for God knows how long, and there's a machine dedicated just... You know what? Never mind. So, uh, what do you say we see how you do on the old Love Master 2000? Oh, good idea. But it won't work. I'm an employee, and employees aren't allowed Thighs Man Trophy scorecards. But, um, I have a card. You could use mine. Well, I don't know. No self-confidence, eh? You're on. Cybership 2000. Okay, Vicky. There you go. This'll prove who's the real sexpert. Do you wanna get down? Yeah, I wanna get down. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Oh. That's, that's... She moves very quickly. Uh, you're bouncing on her head. Stop. That's very uncomfortable. Get down on it. <laughs> Where do they get the license for this song? Well, pal, let's see you top that. Oh, I couldn't. You win, I guess. Now, um, <clears throat> how about some private lessons? <laughs> Dream on. I'm heading for my cabin. And a nice, stimulating book. But wait! I didn't even lose all my clothes yet! Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Your score, Larry oh, Laffer. Yeah. One thousand. Oh. Wow. wow! A perfect oh. score. Oh. Laffer, oh. come by the office, okay? I get off at midnight. Please? Well, you didn't beat Vicky, but who cares? You got a record high score on the Love Master 2000. Everything about this room makes me so uncomfortable, I'm leaving immediately. Map, take me anywhere but here. Kitchen, yes. Your attention, please. What? Larry Laffer has just won the sexual technique portion of the competition with a record high perfect score of 1,000 points. Congratulations, Larry! What a man! Okay, I can take the interruption to, uh, to toot my own horn for a while. I'm not sure if I mentioned yet or not, but my god, I really adore the music in this game. Well, most of it, anyway. Just, like, the easy listening, kind of 70s lounge vibe. I just adore it. Alright, what's next? Now, as long as we're in the kitchen, uh, we have a few of the things we need to get moving on the cooking part of the competition. There we go. Crabs and Love Master are good. Um, yeah, Captain's Cook-Off I haven't even tried yet. I don't know 
if you can try it and fail and then retry? I, I think you can, so we'll give that a whirl. But let's see what we need for the captain's cook-off. And the information here is in this little magazine that we've been carrying around forever that I've been looked at, but I've never actually read before. Though you can smell it. This magazine page smells like fish. Probably because it was once wrapped around one. Hmm, the uh, cyber sniff came up on seven, and that is exactly the same kind of smell that was down in the Love Master, so that's tasteless. This page contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese. The ingredients include beaver milk, as always, milk from the elusive Venezuelan beaver is much preferred, a pinch of salt, rennet, for which lime juice may be substituted in a pinch, and a hint of mold. Now for the details of preparation. Hey, you made a subiism. What? A subiism. You know, when you choose a word based on previous words? Okay, like you use the cliche in a pinch because you just finished saying the phrase pinch of salt. Get it? Damn, you're weird, Larry. Anyhow, there's more on the back of the page. Oh, you mean I have to click again just to hear the back? Oh, stop your whining. Here, the back contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese and kumquat quiche. The ingredients include beaver cheese and a sliced kumquat. You probably don't want to hear the rest of this either, do you? I'm sorry I clicked on that now, but hey, at least we know exactly what we need. So we have a few of the ingredients we need for Venezuelan beaver cheese, which is a Monty Python reference. Look it up. So we have a cooking pot, the pinch of salt. Um, okay, so we don't really have a lot that we need for the Venezuelan beaver cheese, but I think I know what we need to get there. So we need to milk the elusive Venezuelan beaver, and to do that, we need access to the lower decks. And to do that, we have to do another thing, which I've been putting off forever because I keep forgetting. Well, before I do what I actually came up here to do in the first place, I know a ready supply of kumquats. Ah, you snare a delicious kumquat from the tree. How you wish you had a taste icon so you could taste it. Hey, wait, with this new interface, you might. Mm, you know what? I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to taste the kumquat no matter what you tell me to do. Uh, all right. Well, Peggy was here a second ago. Peggy, I need you for a sec. <laughs> hey, Peggy. Hello again, Miss Peggy. Hello, Ted. My God, Peggy, I adore you. Yes, yeah, so we have to find the cabin boy for several reasons. Uh, first and foremost, we need access to the hold so we can get Drew's clothes so she can come join us for whatever. But uh, also, for reasons now unforementioned uh, and et cetera, et cetera, in repetition, i.e. So, um, where can I find a cabin boy, Peggy? You stupid son of a Don't you know you can never find a god cabin boy when you need him? I go looking for one near every night, right before bed, and do I find one? Hell no! Well, um, my needs are a bit simpler. Um, I just want a favor. Well, there is one sneaky ass little foreign motherfucker always hiding out down there in the employees' break room. Name of X Squats or something like that, I don't know. Uh, why don't you try looking there? Thanks, Peggy. Good recommendation. I will. Well, we know for a fact he's probably not in the break room because we've been there. Peggy, I I've been in that employees' break room and um, don't ask how. I didn't see a soul. It was completely deserted, as if no one works on this ship. <laughs> Nobody does but me! I have to do everything around here! Peggy, swab the decks! Peggy, weld the railing! Peggy, hose off the captain's rubber sheets! Shit! Ain't nobody works like I do! Um, very impressive. <clears throat> and colorful. But, um, where's Exquisite's, um, he, he, if he's not in that break room? Oh, the sneaky little bastard's probably hiding behind the locker bay! Did you look in there? Well, we did find that one locker that has a combination that we don't know, but maybe she does. Which locker is Kizowitz in? Who am I? Ran f***ing McNally? Find your own way, Columbus! But you can bet it opens from the bottom, because he's such a tiny little p I know I'll regret this, but, um, could you be a little more specific? Sh 
Did your mother have any children that lived? Second locker, bottom row. Now beat it! And I don't mean your little weed whacker either. Let's see if we can get a little bit more information out of her. What's the combination? Do you know? I can't get Suzy Q's locker open. Do you know the combination? For sure, kid. Why did you ask me sooner? 38, 24, 36. Seems so obvious. I don't know if I need to write that down. I don't think I do, but I'm going to anyway. I asked her for the combination again, and her response is so golden I have to play it again. What was that combination again? Oh, sure, you little f***ing d*** head. Can't you remember anything? 38. Okay, so second from the bottom, this should be this one. Open. Enter like this. Got it. Yep. Okay, that was a visual gag that that happened. Hello, who dares to enter my private chambers? Ah, you here for dirty pictures? Huh? Oh, um, excuse me. I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Lapper. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you make me laugh, you big zero. Big zero? Oh, well, yeah. That is my cabin number. Listen, I, I, I can't quite read your name tag. Is that, um, Exel Watsikits? Maybe. Maybe not. You here for dirty pictures? Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, at least I don't think so. Okay, whatever. You're the boss. Hunky donkey dory worry. So here's what I kind of like about Exquisites is, is he's supposed to be a complete amalgamation of pretty much every single culture there is. You'll notice he's got uh, he's got later hosen and he's sort of doing the Indian yogi thing and he's got on a Turkish fez. He talks in an accent that you can't quite place. But what I really like about it is that listen to if you listen to his musical motif. It's got like the African whistles, and it's got uh, steel drums, and it's got banjos, and it's got sort of the Japanese, uh, what, like a Koto Shamisen thing happening on. It's interesting, and they give him a name that you literally cannot pronounce, and only in his native tongue. Anyway, that's just a small thing. I love it. Alright, Exquisites, what can we do for you? You can pronounce it however you want, but I, I prefer Exquisites. Either Zawigs is an eclectic collector, or his family heritage is a multicultural jumble. His little hiding place is awash with cultural references. Also with the uh, Sierra logo right in the middle of his later hosen. Adorable. What the hell is in that jar? Hmm, it's either a miniature version of those Easter Island heads, or a bust of Al Lowe. No, but you do see Al Lowe back there, which I believe is one of the pictures you can uh, upload. Like I mentioned earlier, you can put that. That'll be you back there, and he covers up until he goes away, which is, I don't know, it's kind of a cute little tease. I like it. These lamps reflect Zickwurst's life philosophy. <laughs> Hang Zickwurst. around long enough, and you may become enlightened. You haven't seen one of these since you went to India with the Beatles to visit the Maharishi. Funny. I don't remember that. Hardly surprising. Oh, that must have been in Leech Suit Larry 4. Hey, him all over ship. Keep eye out. Are you a cabin boy on the ship, or aren't you? Yes. No. Perhaps. Hmm, not clear. Hmm, it seems as if you might be unsure. Well, since I saw movie Cabin Boy, I branch out into new work. Ugh, stinker. <laughs> uh, Exquisites is also one of those characters that is incidental, it means nothing, and I like him. I like what he represents, but I don't like him as a character in the game. He sucks. Um, do you know where I could obtain some, well, photographs? You know, the, uh, <clears throat> good, kind, wink, wink. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Leaf Blower wants to buy some filthy pictures, huh? Oh no, I, I have no interest in pornography. I'm an artist. Oh yes, artist, me too. And these are very special. Oh, uh, how's that? 
Why, they are pictures of you! Wow! What? Um, that's a lot of pictures. I don't think I've been caught in that many sexually compromising scenes. Well, unless you count me naked in the hallway. Say, how did you get photographs of me like this? Oh, it's no problem, really. Fast film, very fast. Oh, I see what you did there. Now, if you come down and see Exquisites before you've had any, uh, encounters, he'd be like, I don't have nothing for you. You're not that sex yet. You loser. So, experts, how about cleaning my cabin? It's a mess. I could do that. Um, forget it. What? Aren't you a cabin boy? Actually, from now on you will please refer to me as individual accoutrement maintenance young person. Or I am Yip for short. See, boss? No more manual labor. Why? <laughs> Why? Who gonna fire a guy with filthy pictures, hmm? You don't mean... blackmail? <gasps> no, 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 no! Wash out your mouth! Everyone buy for personal portfolio, hmm? Keepsake, memorabilia, good stuff. Use good film, good camera, good angles. Hasselblad, medium format, 90 millimeter lens. Blows up, real nice. Good for over sofa. Even better for over bed. Yeah, he is a blackmail artist, so I need to get those pictures off of him for reasons I don't really know why, but it's an option, so what the hey? Well, I suppose I should buy some pictures from you. <laughs> Can you um, charge it to my room? Okay, the doke, whatever you are saying. Oh, so it is like a legitimate little industry. Well, what do you know? Okay, so I have pictures, um. Right, and now I need to ask him about the clothes, maybe. So, uh, Susie Q, do you take care of Drew Barrymore's cabin? Yes. No. Maybe. Not help you, anyway. How about some fine silver, huh? Very heavy plated. Thanks, but, um, I'm trying to find her clothes. I think you know where her suitcase is. Oh, I know. Believe me, I know. But, too busy to help you. Bye, Joey. Uh, no. So, uh, Susie Q, do you take care of Drew Barrymore's cabin? Yes. Thanks. Oh. Hmm, all right. So, we need to enter into negotiations. Do you need help with anything? Really? You don't say. All right, fine. How about you just give me the key to the holds and we'll call it square? Nah, no, ignorant, know nothing about that. Hmm. That large air vent must help Ziegenbus keep his cool. Hmm. That looks like a suspicious air vent, and it's almost open. Maybe we could just open it a little bit more. Hey, what you doing? Mess with stuff right in front of me, huh? What wrong you? Okay, so I can't do anything while he's here. How do I get rid of him? All right, we'll think about that for a little bit, but no, I still don't have the answer of where her suitcase is. Yeah, bye-bye, Exy. Hasta la vista, Potsala. All right. Your attention, please. Will the party who borrowed Captain Queeg's balls please return them to the ballroom? It's kind of a long shot, but let's go back up and talk to Peggy. Maybe she can give us some insight into Exy's uh, psyche. Ah, it's a new topic of conversation. So, um, uh, Miss Peggy, uh, would you tell me about Zekowitzy Q? Cheap f***ing foreign bastards. All his kind wants to do is take jobs away from us real Americans. Let me guess Ms. who Peggy, you voted for. When was the last time you even saw America? 1970 3 And what's it to you, you little d***head? Ever regret asking a question? Lots of times. Of course, the j has got one sneaky f***. In hobby. Uh, all right. Well, we know what his hobby is. We should probably skip right down to his needs, but whatever. What's execute its uh, hobby? I that X Lax is one perverse little motherfucker, always sneaking around the fucking ship's secret passageways, spying on the fucking paying customers. That little bird. Is that legal? 
You mean it's illegal? Hell no! <laughs> oh, but that don't stop the little from doing it, does it now? I'd like to know what he does with all the filmy shoots. A blackmail would be my guess. Or maybe the alt dot pervert news group. Ooh, wow, there's a retro reference for you. News groups? What? Is there anything Kuzuwitsukase needs? I mean, something I could give him to gain his favor? Arg! I don't know if he needs anything, but I know what he wants! And it sure ain't a whiff of my crabby p Whoa! <laughs> Peggy. Is there anything Stubby Quetzy Watts wants? Simple-minded little piece of sh**. Can't you figure anything out? He wants to get into the U.S. of A., all right? But he ain't got no f***ing chance, schmuck, because he ain't got no f***ing passport. Passport, huh? Well, that shouldn't be so hard to find on a cruise ship. You are one dumb son of a bitch. Don't you remember what happened to all the passports when you came aboard? Ah, oh, no. Probably you were too busy sniffing them fine young officers, wasn't you? Okay, well, uh, I probably can guess that the passports are all at the purser's desk, but why not? Let's continue this delightful conversation with Peggy. I don't know shit about that, but I do know this. Your mother was a <laughs> crack whore. Bye there, uh, Peggy. We'll continue this conversation never. I'll see you around, Miss Peggy. It's been my f***ing pleasure, you p***. Ay, ay, ay. All right, down to the purser's desk. Here we go. Uh, uh, my mouse is being weird. Uh, oh, and you enter right into conversation as soon as you step down. And I guess they're like, oh, what else could you possibly be here for? However, she who does the um, announcements, she was like, hey, uh, come up to my room. Come see me, please. You got a thousand on the sex thing, uh, but you can't interact with her in any way whatsoever. Horseshoes may not be removed from the horseshoe competition area. I'm looking for that cabin boy, ex lax or whatever his name is. Oh, sure. I'll leave him a note. He'll get to it. <laughs> Never. All right. So the only way to go talk to Exquisites is actually go down and find him, and he never moves. Well, he will, just not yet. I'd like my passport, please. I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Impossible. <laughs> Absolutely impossible. Nope, not allowed. Did you mock what me? Do you mean, not allowed. Why not? It's my passport. I should be able to get my passport at any time. Ooh, Mr. Big Tough Guy. Don't beat me, please. Well, on second thought, he can go ahead and beat me. Okay, I don't care. You can have it back. Just show me your identification. My passport is my identification. I must see some form of photographic identification or no passport day. Those are my rules. You're making this up as you go along, right? Sorry. No photo ID, no passport. Let me see if I understand this. To get back my photo ID, I have to show you my photo ID. Don't bother me with details. Please deposit $1.75 for each additional minute. Right. Like, I'm gonna help you steal poor Mr. Laffer's passport, uh-huh. But I am Mr. Laffer. That's yet to be proven, hunky. Oh. Okay, so through that long exchange, uh, we have to get a photo ID to prove we who are we are so we can get our photo ID. And what is this a picture of, exactly? It appears to be me, fully clothed, I might add, uh, supporting... Am I stuck in someone's butt? What? It's a Polaroid, too. It's not the Hasselblad he was talking. Whatever. Hey, mister. Want to sell some filthy pictures? All right. So the point is, uh, do we have a picture of ourselves. We have some glue, and I think we can probably fashion a crude photo ID out of maybe my card? I don't know. Let's So let's see if we can combine that with the mucilage. Good job. Now the photos of you are not only dirty, they're sticky. All right, we're on the right track. So let's see if we can combine it with my cabin key card. Will that do the trick? Good idea. Yeah, but first I'm going to tear off some of this groinal area. 
you're fully clothed, Larry. All right, and then I have a perfectly valid, somehow, don't know where the writing came from, uh, photo ID. You've created what may well be the world's first pornographic photo ID. Yeah, I kind of like it. Figures. Uh-huh. All right, Peter, here you go. I'd like my passport, please. What for? You have no need for it here aboard ship. Look, here's my photo ID. That's what you said you needed, right? Now be a nice little puckered pandering cursor and procure my passport pronto. Yes, sir. Ditch. Oh, bitch. Here you are. Do not lose it. There are many nefarious types roaming this ship. <laughs> oh. All of them mooching ill-gotten booty such as this from our unsuspecting guileless guests. I doubt that. You're just paranoid. Oh, muchisimos gracias, senor. We ranking officers can never get enough insults from lowly passenger scum. Oh, Larry, you made him cry. Please deposit $1.75 for each additional minute. And we gotta do this again. Oh, he's learned his lesson, I see. He turns into a Disney character sometimes, I notice. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's just hilarious. Let's go. Hey there, yo Ah, uh, same right at you, Mr. Loaf in the Pants. All right, here you go. Oh, travel? Okay. So, um, do you enjoy traveling, Zippy Wits? Enjoy? Yes, very much. Love to travel. But someday want to settle down. Oh, really? Where? Where? U.S. of A. Where else? Love Fresno suburbs. <laughs> Want big Volvo, crab grass, satellite dish. So I guess by asking him about travel, that's sort of a roundabout way to knowing that he'll need a passport eventually, but it seems like talking to Peggy is the obvious solution. Miss Peggy tells me you have an interest in travel? Ah, yes, she speaks truth. Need to see passports so can make copy. Any country, US, very, very good. Where yours? Oh, it's around. All right, uh, not that we should trust him with our passport, but here you go. Either up. You can take our passport. I know how much you want to travel, zippity doo -dah. I'm a kind of a world traveler myself. In fact, I have my passport with me right now. What? You have passport? <gasps> Never see American passport. Show me passport, let me see it. Thanks. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> That's Damn. really weird. Where'd he go? I have the sudden urge to get out of this room immediately. Good idea. You may as well get something in trade for your passport. Oh god, let me out. I can't take that picture. I don't. Alright, we'll come back here again, begrudgingly. Alright, but either way, I had the custodial key, which gives us access to a bunch of stuff. So there are three holes this key will open. So we have the aft hold, the lower aft hold, and the forward hold. I forget which ones are which. I think I know what this one's all about. But uh, let's start down here and see if we can find the suitcase. There we go. Oh, Indiana Jones reference. Oh no. How will I ever find Drew's suitcase among all these? It'd be like finding a needle in a haystack. <laughs> <laughs> Your attention, please. Don has won the skepticism trophy. What refuses to believe it? Uh, okay. A, should we reference the fact that there was a gorilla down here that gave me exactly the suitcase I need and is never referenced nor talked to or spoken of? And hey. Yeah, baby. Just take the long way, dildes. Okay, and the reason we know it is Drew's suitcase is that we get the little sniper sniff and it smells like suntan lotion, so yeah. The luggage tag on the side of this suitcase reads, Drew Barrymore. Finally, some good luck. Can we open it by chance? What's in there? Oh yeah, open this. Oh, come on, that's a perfectly logical thing to want to do. Fine, we'll just take it. And into my pants it goes. I don't think there's actually anything you could even look at in here. A lot of assets, 
but no comedic value whatsoever. Nothing, nothing, zero, nada. All right, well, we can also explore the other holds, but you know what? Let's just go ahead and get Drew Barrymore out of the way. All right, oh, you got your drink finally. This is all that's left of Drew's gigantic erection. Me too. Uh... Okay, well, whatever. Not exactly sure what that's referring to. Can I take your sunscreen? Want me to rub some of that sunscreen on your back, Drew? No, I just applied some. Too bad you were late. I had trouble getting it on the small of my back. Oh. What's wrong, Larry? Codpiece too tight? Oh, yeah, the small of the back. Oh, not as much as he likes arms, though. Oh, from those last games, super arm finish. Drew, I've got your suitcase. Really? I don't see it. The attendant made me leave it in the changing cabana. Come on. But, Larry, this means I'll have to parade completely across the deck, totally, utterly nude, showing everyone here my tan, fit, naked body. I like that. <laughs> well, here we are, Drew. It's not much, but uh, it is roomy. Okay, Larry, just give me a minute to hop in your shower and rinse off the sunscreen, okay? Yeah, the sunscreen's fine. You're... Okay, well, bye. And she does not seem to mind my room whatsoever. Uh, there you go. And thankfully, it comes out perfectly warm. Huh. Oh, steam's not the only thing rising. So, here's the thing with Drew. Uh, she will never, ever, ever leave your shower. You've gotten Drew this far. Now, if you could just get her out of the shower. Drew? Are you coming out soon? In a minute, Larry. I just need to get this lotion off. When they said waterproof, they really meant it. Drew, isn't that lotion off by now? Oh, maybe, but I like to be sure, you know? Don't mind me, just go about your business. I'll be out just as soon as I'm squeaky clean all over. Would you like a little company? I uh, could scrub your back, you know. Thanks, Larry. But ever since I started yoga, I've been able to scrub my own back. Drew, you must be turning into a big pink raisin in there. Actually, this sunscreen is pretty tough. So far, the water just beads up and runs off. I can't even get my hair wet. I'll be out soon. I think this is a usage of the word soon I'm not familiar with. Drew, do you mind if I go run some errands around the ship for a few minutes? No problem, Larry. Go ahead. I'll probably be out by the time you get back, and then we can fuck her all night. Oh. You, but she also means converse about Anton fucker, but still, the point remains that she's never coming out. All right, so this, the reason uh, we had to do all this run the water thing and flush the toilet is because of the old adage, whenever you flush the toilet, something happens to the shower that's awful. Yeah, so that's what this puzzle is all about. It's not even really a puzzle. You just kind of go up and get the hose and you're done. But, all right, Drew, this will get you out. This ought to get her out of there. Oops. You bastard! That's it! I'm not staying here, and don't you try coming around the pool, either. Wait! Hot diggity. That certainly seems to have gone well. Ah, uh, well, well, well. Another failure. We just tried to get her out of the shower, and tried to trick her, and we kind of got what we deserved. Uh, flash forward. Oh, man. Oh, I don't know what just happened there. Oh, look, a whole bunch of mold has grown in my shower stall. Goodness oh gracious, where have we learned we need some of this before? The steam from Drew's shower has produced a small patch of mold. I'm not sure that's how mold works, but hey, I'll take it. That was a sound. Well, okay, so through all of that, the only reason we had to get Drew down here in the first place was to get... Mold. The pulsating mold radiates an eldritch glow, reminding you of that monster you left in the back of the fridge so long, it self-actualized and organized a union. Too bad I couldn't organize my fridge. Cybersmith 2000. Oh. All right, I guess that explains what number eight is. Mold. 
So that puts us one step closer to winning the cooking competition. We have the kumquat, we got the mold, we have everything but the beaver cheese. And now that we have the custodian's key, we have access to where... Your attention, oh, shut it. Thank you so bloody much. Okay, so next time we'll go into the cooking competition, and then I think... Uh, we have more or less what we need to do the best dressed? I might be wrong, but I think we're sort of entering the end game territory here, because everything's starting to click into place. So until next time, good night, jelly beans. Good night.